One of the most common questions we get over on our skill capped discord is which alt someone should play. Well, while this question could be answered with something as simple as just play the most flavor of the month class or check out our tier list and pick an S tier spec, the real answer is actually quite complex and years of the PVP meta developing has led us to a point where each class has a very specific role in PVP. It's for that reason that we felt an alt picking guide would be the perfect video to make for you guys so that you can figure out exactly what the different class archetypes are and which class might be best suited to you as an alt. Without further ado, let's get into skill caps guide on how to choose your alt. All right. So what exactly do we mean by class archetype? Well, since the introduction of four man teams in the arena world championship scene, players have become more and more accustomed to playing multiple classes in order to widen their team's choice of compositions. This started around Legion and became even more prevalent throughout BFA with the most flexible rosters tending to have the best success in tournaments. So what we'll be doing in this video is presenting some player profiles and discussing their roles within their teams so that you can fully understand why these archetypes exist and what makes them so important. First, let's take a look at what we're calling the main melee archetype. This group includes warriors, rogues, and windwalker monks. Now, what do these three classes have in common? Well, beyond the fact that they all share a potent mortal strike effect, they're also all quite durable, able to effectively peel for their team, have great CC options, and more importantly, have offered a ton of viable comps that can be built around them over the years. It's for that reason that whenever you look at the top performing AWC teams, they generally have a star melee player that performs at a high level on at least two of these classes. Unlike any other melee, which you rarely, if ever see teams built around, Warriors, Rogues, and Windwalker Monks all play a pivotal role in some of the most iconic comps that we have ever seen in World of Warcraft PvP. Let's start by taking a look at Blizzo, the star melee player in this year's skill-capped EU AWC team. He's highly regarded as one of the best warriors in the world, making it to the 2019 BlizzCon Finals and winning the European Championship last year. What makes Blizzo such a valuable player for his team, though, is that he's not only a top warrior, but he's also an excellent Windwalker Monk having won countless tournaments on that spec as well. The ability to switch between the two classes means that Blizzo offers invaluable comp variety to his team. One game he'll be on his warrior, playing with a mage, and the next game he'll be on Windwalker Monk, cleaving with a DK. What's important though is that in both comps, he's the pillar of the team. Given that he's in charge of leading setups with his reliable CC and making sure to peel for his team with his defensive utility. It doesn't stop with Blizzo though. We've also got Waz, the 2019 BlizzCon champion, who's known for his almost unrivaled rogue gameplay. But just like Blizzo, Waz is also known for being an excellent multi-classer, performing at the highest level not only on his Windwalker alt, but even on his warrior that he's played on the BlizzCon stage. The list of main melee players that stick to these classes and excel at different ones goes on. However, one key thing to point out is that you don't ever really see a warrior or windwalker main picking up rogue as an alt. This mostly comes down to the complexities of the class, given that it generally takes years of experience to make it to the top as a rogue, which is even less likely to happen if you're playing it as an alt. The similarities between rogue and monk are also much larger than the similarities between rogues and warriors. So it's for that reason that we suggest warrior and rogue mains to alt a windwalker, while windwalker mains should consider picking up a warrior as their main. Next, let's take a look at what we're calling the support melee. This group includes rep paladins, enhancement shamans, and DKs. So what about these melee makes them support based? Well, besides the obvious hybrid utility that rep and enhanced shamans offer, all three classes tend to complement one of the main melee classes very well. You could pick almost any of these support melee, stick them with a main melee, and you'll end up with at least a somewhat viable, if not incredibly strong comp. While the main melee brings everything that you need to establish a strong composition, the support melee tie everything together with good defensive utility, great damage during setups, and most importantly, a win condition that the main melee otherwise wouldn't be able to create without help from one of these support melee. So, which melee players have we seen over the years that have performed at the highest level within this group of specs? Well, one obvious pick is another member of the current skill-capped EU AWC team, Zipot. Highly regarded for his DPS Shaman gameplay, Zipai had a stronghold over the European circuit at the start of BFA on his Enhancement Shaman with his team's Turbo. What some players might not remember though is that Zipai's team actually heavily relied on his DK back in 2019, where they won back-to-back -back tournaments as Windwalker DK. Once more, the list of players that have performed at a high level and relied on picking up different melee within this support role goes on. 
Unlike the main melee though, the differences between these are a lot more subtle. So there's less restriction in which we'd recommend you pick up. It honestly just comes down to what partners you have to play and the comps that you'll be able to build around these melee. If you're looking for a recommendation though, Rets and Shamans playing DK as an alt is always a good choice, while DKs can look to pick whichever of the two they prefer. Before we move on to the rest of the video, we just want to let you all know that if you do end up deciding which alt you want to play next, we've actually got you covered over at skillcap.com wow with everything you need to get started on that new class of yours. Our beginner courses include information on the best races, talents, PvP talents, covenants, and gear. We've also got countless arena commentaries with new ones being released every week that walk you through the decision making of some of the world's best players in real time so that you can get better faster. So if you're interested in taking your game to the next level and achieving your goals as quickly as possible on your next alt, head on over to skillcap.com wow and sign up today. Link in the description below. All right, next up, we've got to take a look at the casters, except this time we'll introduce both archetypes together as the caster archetypes are treated differently to the melee ones. So within the main caster archetype, we have mages and warlocks. And within the support caster archetype, we have shadow priests, balanced druids, and elemental shamans. Now, this might seem quite similar to the melee archetypes, given that the support casters are all hybrids. However, the glaring difference here is that we absolutely do not recommend main casters alternating between a mage and a warlock. Before we explain why, let's start by taking a look at why these are considered main casters. Over the years, we've seen players take both of these classes to the limits, with both winning BlizzCons and generally being part of some of the most iconic WoW comps like Rogue Mage and LSD. In fact, we've seen LSD win more than one BlizzCon, and after Rogue Mage made it to the final in 2015, it finally won the whole thing in 2019. So what exactly makes us consider these two classes as main casters, and why are we so adamant that players should not multi-class them as alts? Well, they're considered the two main casters because the entire team can be built around either one of these classes. The 2019 BlizzCon champions Method Black primarily relied on two comps, Mage Lock Druid and Rogue Mage Druid, while one of their competitors, Cloud9, did the same. We've also seen teams built around a Warlock, where they bounce between comps like LSD and Warrior Lock Druid. And as for why, we suggest not multi-classing them. This primarily comes down to how difficult they are to play at the highest level. Both Mages and Warlocks offer a level of control that the other classes don't. They're also quite frail and easily killed when played by weaker players, and you should generally expect to always be worse on your alt than you are on your main. And honestly, we challenge you to find a single player that's actually performed at the highest level on both a mage and a warlock at the same time, it just doesn't happen. It's for that reason that we suggest mages and warlocks to look to support caster roles for their alt. Here they have the choice of Balanced Druid, Shadow Priest, and Elemental Shaman. Each of these share a very similar trait and generally make up very similar compositions. They're also usually paired with either a main melee or a main caster, so it makes perfect sense for a mage or warlock to play any of these classes. There are also plenty of examples of top pros playing these as their alts, with the 2018 BlizzCon champion Sam I Am securing the trophy for his team on a Balanced Druid. While the 2020 European champions also had Morrow pilot his Balanced Druid to a few victories whenever it was needed. There's plenty more examples of top pros that have picked up these support casters as their alts, and given that they're generally easier to play than mages or warlocks, it's no surprise that we see this being one of the most common alt picks for main casters. As for those that already main a balanced druid, shadow priest, or elemental shaman, well, they generally follow a similar set of rules, opting to pick alts within their own grouping. However, the main difference is that while it is quite difficult for a melee player to learn how to play a caster, the opposite is true for casters. So this then opens up the opportunity for support caster mains to also look at the support melees as an alt. Again, Zpai is a great example of this, given that he's a main elemental shaman that has also done incredibly well on support melee. So if you're a mage or warlock main, we suggest looking to support casters for an alt. And if you're a support caster main, we suggest picking up another support caster or even a support melee if you wanna mix things up and widen your skill set as a player. Alright, so at this point you might be wondering about a few classes and specs that we haven't mentioned yet. Well, we haven't touched on Ferals, Hunters, and Demon Hunters yet, because they're actually quite tricky to categorize. First, let's talk about DHs. Since their introduction in Legion, they've had a handful of quite wacky comps, and have shared the role of both the main melee and support melee at different times. We've seen them as the main melee in DH Boomkin, which actually won BlizzCon in 2018. 
and we've seen them wreak havoc throughout the European circuit in BFA as a main melee in DHDK. However, they also ended up as the perfect partner for both Warriors and Windwalker Monks toward the end of BFA, which leaves them trapped in this weird place where their role is entirely dependent on their strength as a class and what the meta looks like at the time. It's for that reason that Demon Hunters are actually a strong ult to have no matter your class. Their toolkit is so varied given that they bring mobility, defensive utility, CC, burst, you name it, they've got it. Unfortunately, Shadowlands has left DH in a much more frail state than ever before, leaving them as one of the least desirable melee at the moment. Still though, we don't think that we've seen the last of them, given that they've managed to retain Mana Burn as a PvP talent. So with just a few small changes and the right meta development, we're sure they'll be back in full force. However, where they'll fit in the meta and how they'll be classified in our archetypes remains to be seen. Now, the other two DPS that we haven't mentioned yet are Ferals and Hunters. The reason that neither of these fit particularly well into either category simply comes down to how these classes operate and the comps we've seen them excel at over the years. Since Legion, we've really only seen Ferals and Hunters consistently performing at a high level by the masses within Jungle Cleave. Sure, players like Peekaboo and Jelly did very well with Thug Cleave back in 2018, but honestly, that was just an anomaly where their classes happen to work extremely well together within that tournament's meta. Generally speaking, girls and hunters rely heavily on the meta, allowing their classes to excel together. The last time that we saw a hunter win a tournament that wasn't playing jungle was all the way back in the 2011 BlizzCon final when the Korean team, OMG, managed to pull off a surprise win against the young skill cap team, comprising of legend snuts, pooks, and toes. In spite of that, over the years we've rarely come across pro players that have done an insane job on a feral or a hunter while also playing any alts at a super high level. Again, this mostly comes down to how limited feral and hunter comps have been, which generally restricts the skill set these players can develop as they're usually stuck just playing the one comp. Regardless though, feral mains generally have the best time picking up a main melee as an alt given that they do perform the main melee role within jungle. As for hunters, well, that's really up to you. The hunter role is quite unique, especially when you consider they play both the ranged marksmanship spec and melee survival spec. So if you're a hunter main, we're going to leave this one entirely up to you. And before we wrap this one up, we also want to touch on healers. While their role is a lot harder to distinguish between each other, there's definitely some standout traits that set each different healer apart. First, let's discuss what we're considering the offensive healers. Both Disc Priests and Resto Druids have typically seen play in some of the most setup-based offensive comps over the years, the most obvious of which is Rogue Mage. Given that both Disc and Resto Druid pair extremely well with a Mage, it's no surprise that they'd be considered an offensive healer, as Mages are generally required to create win conditions for themselves by consistently setting up cross CC kill attempts, and both Disc and Resto Druids are the perfect partners for doing so. The perfect example of a player that fills this role is Chas. We initially saw him burst onto the scene on his main, Discipline Priest. But as the PvP meta shifted away from RMP as being the best variant of the comp, Chas begun to master his druid and ended up taking the crown in 2019 when his team won BlizzCon as RMD. On the flip side, we've got more defensive healers that don't bring as much CC and have generally seen the most play with melee cleaves over the years, being Resto Shamans and Mistweaver Monks. With the right support from their durable melee, these healers are able to shine by assisting in their team's offensive pressure with their utility while also being quite annoying for the enemy team to try and kill. And that leaves us with Holy Paladins who offer the best of both worlds. Not only do they have consistent and reliable CC to assist with setups, they also bring an incredible defensive toolkit for supporting their team through ridiculous pressure, all while being one of the easiest, if not the easiest healer to play. It's for that reason that we generally suggest Resto Druids and Disc Priests to either branch out onto Holy Paladin or stay within their own archetype. With that being said, both Druids and Discs have typically been considered the hardest healers to master is why we generally don't see players ulting either a Disc or Resto Druid and instead opting for a Holy Paladin as their main ult. As for Resto Shamans and Monks, they're not quite as hard to play at the highest level and given how much they've had in common in terms of their best available comps, both Shaman and Monk players can feel free to stay within their own archetype or pick up a Holy Paladin as well. Despite all of this though, we generally find these days that the pro healers try to keep up on every healer while just sticking to whatever is the most meta and works best with their partners at the time. Alright everyone, hopefully you found this guide interesting and are ready to pick up the most suited alts for your skill set. Let us know in the comments below what you thought of this guide and if you'll be following our recommendations to start focusing on your next alt. 
And if you enjoyed it, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and bell to be notified the moment we release more Shadowlands PvP content. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.